Today we're talking about how your feet affect your posture and I have a really cool test to show you. My computer is open right here to show you whether or not you have what I refer to as a mixed foot. And I want to talk about how problematic a mixed foot is for anyone. And the explanation really is quite simple. And this might not be something that we think about on a daily basis, but there needs to be synchronicity between your brain and your feet. And what most people don't think of is that when the ability to stabilize our entire body weight on two moving segments is actually something that is super complex and super complicated and that this is something that we actually learn to do in the first stages of life. The more we do it, the more we repeat it, the more we stabilize or learn to stabilize our body in space, in the three dimensional spaces, the better we become at doing this movement. However, if we have poor posture and if we have a, a gait that is not optimal, not only are we going to waste energy standing upright, this can lead to training plateaus, this can lead to injury, and this can pretty much lead to exhaustion. So the more we learn how to move, the better we become, but then the challenge is gonna be to fight gravity as optimally as possible and it does start with the feet. Now, the foot in itself, the entire complex of the foot is, is great, but it can also become very problematic. And this is why I find that looking at the feet really is the missing link in every single therapy out there. Why? Because there are three different areas, three possibilities that the foot can create an imbalance with your posture, with your movement, and quite frankly, with your life. If you are in pain, you are not fighting gravity optimally. And um, quite frankly, you are it's just a question of time before you get injured. I know it's a bold statement to make, but it is just a question of time. It's gonna depend on different factors, but the mechanics of your body, if they're not properly aligned, Gonna, there's going to come a time that your foot's going to land on the floor, you'll move, and then there's going to be an overcompensation. So how can you tell if there is an imbalance with your foot? I have a video that's ready for you right here, and I'm just going to grab you and flip this video right around. Okay, here we go. So this is what I call the foot stability test. And what the subject is going to do is that they're going to lift their right foot off the floor and what I want you guys to do is I want you to focus your eyes here on this Mortise and on the movement that is going to be done. So you guys ready? Okay, so here we go. Check out the movement of the left foot. You see how that foot pronates? Here, the left foot went in. I hope everybody saw that. So now the subject is going to lift their left foot and we're going to bring our focus on the right foot. You ready? Look at the movement of the right foot. Okay, so you see how that's moving out. So what does that mean? Well, it simply means that that is what I refer or what I call a mixed foot. What does that cause as far as your posture? And I encourage every single one of you to try it. If you're watching this video right now, please stand up and lift your right foot off the floor and pay attention to the movement that your left foot, the weight-bearing foot is doing. If it moves inwards or out, you're gonna wanna compare that movement with the other side. If there's an opposition in both feet, meaning if one pronates and if the other supinates, then you have just identified a mixed foot. Now, if a foot pronates, I think that we'll all agree that the knee on that side will move in and that the hip on that side, let's take the example of the left foot, will move down. Now, if this is true for the left, the exact opposite will happen with the right side, which means that the right foot supinates, the knee moves out, and the hip moves back. So you've just identified torsion 
portion of the pelvis. Now remember that the brain uses the information not only from your feet, but also from the pelvis, that the moment that the sacral angle changes, you're actually going to have an immediate impact on your spinal cord. It's going to start with the lumbar spine, and then it's going to move all the way up to your head. In other words, the ability of fighting gravity will be compromised. There needs to be symmetry. Your brain needs to feel where your feet are in space. If there is a contradiction in your center of mass, if it's too forward or too back, you're going to have a compensation in the step that you take. And that compensation is going to have an impact on every single joint above your body. So let's, that was a biomechanical test to figure out whether or not your weight bearing surfaces are equal. Now, another test that I'd like you to do to figure out if your brain is sensing your foot a proper, uh, accordingly, and that's important because your brain needs to feel where your foot is on the ground. Then I'm going to want you now to sit down and grab a pen or grab a fork and grab your foot right on your knee, bring it up like this. And what I'd like you to do is with the fork, I'll use a pen as an example. I just want you to rub your foot like this. All right. Do it on the left, then do it on the right. And what I'd like you to do is pay attention if the sensation is equal on both sides. More often than not, people will say to me, I feel it more on one side as opposed to the other. What does that mean? Well, it means that the, size that, the side that is less sensitive is the side that is less active. So in other words, your brain is having a harder time feeling your lower body, your foot on that side. So that's going to create a problem because when your foot lands on the floor, how are you going to stabilize yourself in relation to gravity optimally? All that you need is one source of instability. So if, in other words, if somebody comes and pushes you, then you're, you might not have proper timing to put your foot down so that you can stabilize your body in space. You understand where I'm going with this? Now project this theory with every single movement that you perform at any moment or at, at any given time throughout the day. So there needs to be a way for you to stimulate or to have proper syn synchronicity between both feet. And that really, again, does start with the way that you learn how to move. Now, if your foot twitches, Aaron is asking here, uh, is that normal? It's, it's, it's normal only if the toes go into flexion. For an adult, a maturity or the expression of a mature nervous system is flexion of the toes. So one of the things that I would uh, recommend to integrate the Babinski reflex is, you know, I'm a big fan of, of having shoes that are made to accommodate your foot. They need to be uh, uh, long enough, they need to be wide enough, and they need to be flexible. But the problem with those theories or with, with, with doing that is that if your foot is already in a compensatory state, it's going to take a very long time to reverse the process. And this is why we've created our postural insoles. And uh, there are ways that you can do it for free, but it just takes much longer. So the postural insoles really are an accelerator that allows you to have an impact on the skin of the foot, on the muscles of the foot, and on the joints of the foot. Remember that all three create or can potentially create an imbalance in posture. So if you want to have a good bang for your buck, if you want to make sure that you address everything together, then you have to address all three sensory entries, feet, muscles, joints together simultaneously for a certain amount of time. What is that time period? A minimum of six weeks. Why? because it takes six weeks to create neuroplasticity in the brain. Now, how does the Posture Pro method address duck feet? Duck feet, symptom or cause? I want you guys to always think about, always have that question in the back of your mind. Is it a symptom or is it a cause? If it's a symptom, it means that it can be reversed. But if you work on the body parts, if your therapy only involves working on the muscles, 
without including the master computer, which is the brain, then the results that you will have will always be temporary. temporary. You will always have results, but you will need to manage those results. And if you give someone a choice, whether or not they'd like to manage the pain or fix the pain, most people will say that they would prefer fixing the pain. And I think that this holds true for every single one of you. So I hope that this uh, live was, um, was informative. I hope that you enjoyed it. Try doing those tests, the uh, foot stability test, the sensitivity test to determine whether or not your brain and your feet are communicating properly with each other. Uh, it's very important that they do. It's an absolute must. And if they're not, then um, <laughs> yes, I, I do agree with that. But you know, you guys are there to help me spread the, spread the message. And uh, please do help me spread the message because I'll tell you what, uh, if, not, if, not, if not for myself, so many people are suffering. And I think that if we just give them very simple tools and very simple solutions to help resolve their pain, then I think that the world would just be a, a much better place because let's face it, when we're in pain, it's not fun for anybody and uh, it really takes a big stroll on, on our life. So on that note, uh, I hope that you guys have a super awesome week. And when I post this video, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments if the testing of the feet helped you determine whether or not your foot imbalance whether or not you do have a foot imbalance so that I can do a, a video on how to fix it. And uh, please share the video and the, and the knowledge. And um, Dark Horse, thank you so much for your comment and I'll see you guys soon, okay? Have a great week, guys.